All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to talk a little bit about how to import this Java practice assignment, the first Java practice assignment into your workspace. Um, I've, I've upgraded this video from sort of the old way, which was to just download uh, the sort of zip file. And uh, now I've uploaded everything into a GitHub repository. So what you need to do is you need to make sure you have a GitHub uh, membership. So if you go into, um, you know, github.com, uh, you need to go, I guess I can log out of my own account, and um, you need to just sign up for it. It's free to sign up, it's free to use, um, and this is just one sort of online cloud repository that uh, people uh, use to share their code. If you share, you know, if you have open source code and you and you share it that way, it's free to share open source code, it's free to download and, and set up, you know, uh, repo uh, not set up repositories, but uh, grab repositories from the cloud, and, um, and and sort of pull them into your own workspace. It's free to use, no problemo. They only start charging when you want to do private stuff. So if you want to privately upload, uh, like, uh, you know, your own code, your own projects, and store it so that it's not freely available for the public, then GitHub charges. So anyway, great solution. Um, you know, f a great little um, uh, application that you can use to uh, store your code and to download your code. So how do you use it? Well, like I said, sign up and you're going to username and password. Once you've done that, uh, then you should be able to uh, create or go into your Spring Tool Suite and you should be able to go to your Git uh, uh, perspective. So you can open up the Git perspective by clicking here with Open Perspective and you can choose Git or you can go to Window Preferences, uh, oh sorry, sorry, Window uh, Perspective, Open Perspective, Other, and then you should be able to choose Git from the list. In any case, you go here and it shows you uh, your GitHub area. So if you didn't have any uh, uh, projects in here, let me just remove this repository from my view. Um, likely you'll see this screen. So you'll have three options, add an existing one from a local repository, clone one, or create a new local Git repository. What we want to do is we want to clone. So what clone means is you're going to do essentially a copy paste from the interwebs. You're going to copy and paste my repository, which is a Java practice assignment one. You're going to copy it from the internet webs and you're going to paste it into your own um, environment, your own code environment. So this should be fairly universal. I mean, I'm using the Spring Tool Suite. This will look very similar in uh, um, the regular old Eclipse, uh, which we call it IDE. This will look more or less similar inside of NetBeans or IntelliJ or whatever. A any of those ma uh, major IDE should have their own sort of GitHub view where you can sort of um, clone repositories. So we're going to clone a GitHub repository. And when you do that, uh, I'm going to specify a clone URI, okay, the clone URI. What is the URI? Well, I'm going to make sure I include this as a copy-paste inside of the uh, spot where you actually downloaded this assignment. So uh, check back in the web page where you downloaded this assignment. There should be uh, an easily copy-pastable um, uh, you know, URI that you can use to copy-paste into here. Uh, but if you don't have it, can't find it, it's not too hard. It's HTTPS. S, make sure it's secure, um, colon slash slash, github.com slash, and then my account, which is tp02ga, uh, the number zero, not the letter O, tp02ga, forward slash, and Java practice assignment one dot git. All right, cool. So if you don't have it in there, what you're going to get is you're going to see just this empty thing. As soon as you paste it in, It'll fill everything out. Um, if you want, you can put in your authentication, but you don't even need the authentication to download um, the the stuff because, like I said, it's a public repository. Anybody can go in and download it. So that's all you need to fill out. Just the URI. Once you paste it in, it should fill out everything else. The host and the repository path. You say next. It's going to go and fetch it. Right now, I only have it as the master branch. I think that's all I'll ever do. There won't be any branches or anything. It's just you know, here's the code for the master. So say okay. Next. Um, and then you can uh, finish it off by, you know, uh, well, can we say, pre anyway, I'm just going to say finish. Then what it's going to do is it's going to download everything from the interwebs, like I said, and it's going to bring that into your repository, into your Git repositories. So we're almost done here. What this does is it stores the repository in sort of the GitHub repositories, right? This has not yet imported it as a uh, Java project in your um 
uh, you know, your own area where you can interact with, with projects and whatnot. Uh, it's just a GitHub repository. So in order to import it into uh, your local environment and actually use it, uh, go into the working directory and you'll see there's a practice assignment one in the working directory. You can right click on it, say import projects, and import it as an existing Eclipse project. Okay, because that's the the it's a it's an existing project that the project exists. The structure is already stored now on your local computer because in this case it downloaded to my GitHub directory, which is you know users slash whatever slash Git. Um, so I'm going to import it as an existing Eclipse project. Say next, and then it just says, okay, here it is. This is the assignment um, project file system or whatever. So I'm just going to say finish, and what that will do is it will import it as an actual project inside of my, you know, my IDE area where I can actually uh, use this project. So now everything should be there. There should hopefully be no errors. And what you can do now is you should be able to go in and start uh, to write the code. So now in order to, you know, play the lottery to actually make this, uh, you know, project function, what I do is you sort of follow the prompts inside of uh, the comment section for these files. So inside of Play Lottery, um, inside of the tests uh, file, um, the lottery number picker, and the lottery number generator, uh, there's sort of these little prompts that give you hints as to how you can go through and do this uh, project. So the first th first place I'd start is the Play Lottery um, Java file. So inside of the Play Lottery Java file, there is a test class. This is essentially what you're going to use in place of your public static void main method. Um, so usually, you know, you have a, when you are running a program with Java, you know, um, a console type program, you run off of the public static void main method. Um, but this is another way to run it. You can actually have a test uh, class, a test annotation on a class. Um, so, or rather on a method. So there's a test annotation. This is called an annotation with the at symbol. And we're putting this on a method. So it's a method level. And uh, what that means, I can right click on this method and say run as, and I can say JUnit test. So it runs a JUnit test. You see there that there's an error. That means, you know, there should be an error. It should fail. The test should fail. It's designed to fail right away out of the box because you need to come in and start writing the code that will actually make this um, assignment run and function properly. So what happens is we run this me method. What that does is it instantiates a new uh, play lottery object and it runs the setup lottery method. Okay, the play lottery object is over here. Play Lottery, which is what we are already inside of. So it's instantiating essentially itself and then running the setup lottery method, which is right here. So what happens when it sets up a lottery? Well, you need to generate, it runs the, um, it creates an instantiation of the lottery number generator class. Lottery number generator is up here um, and it has a generate lottery numbers method. So this method should return a set of six different integers. Okay, hint, use the random class located at java util random to generate random numbers now this assignment is not going to be easy this assignment is is hard on purpose all right you are going is presents you with a real world situation that you need to solve um, by doing real world things like using google okay a lot of students hate that they have to do some extra thinking and that they hate that I don't give them all the tools in order to be able to solve these assignments. But trust me, when you go to university, if you go to university or college, this is going to be exactly the situation that you're going to be thrown into. Your professor is not going to spoon feed you absolutely everything so you can go on your merry way and code the solution without any uh, problems. Okay, you're going to have to use Google to solve this assignment. So just embrace that. It's going to be hard. Embrace it. Um, so I give you a hint. Use the random class. So that means you need to do some Googling on the Java Util random class and maybe how to use the random class. Or maybe you can even look at the documentation that's provided in here and start looking up how to use random. Okay. Um, in any case, you need to use random, the random class, to generate a set of six different integers. Keyword being a set. This is another type of data structure. Again, you're going to be upset at me because I didn't define what a set is and how to use it. Okay. The hint I will give you is perhaps you should look up what a hash set is and, and specifically what the hash sets um, add method does. Okay. Look at the add method for 
a hash set. So if you declare a hash set and name it, you know, my hash set, look at what the add method does for my hash set. Okay, my hash set is just a variable name that I pulled out of thin air, but it comes from the hash set data type. Okay, look at the add method. Look at what it returns. The add method returns something. Why? Fig figure out what it returns and why it returns the, the values that it returns. Okay, understand that. That's going to be helpful for completing this assignment. All right, so you need to return a set of six different integers, um, and that's what you need to do inside of the generate lottery numbers. All right, then we go back. What else does it do? There's a lottery number picker. What does a lottery number picker do? Well, this method should, re should pull input from the user in the console. It should gather six integers from the user and then store these numbers in a set, okay, key here being hash set, look it up, of integers that will then be returned by the method. Hint, use the following code to get the numbers. Here's the code that you need to actually read an integer from the console. Okay, when I say this method should pull input from the user in the console, here is the code that you need to read integers from the console. Perhaps you should read up a little bit on the scanner and how it works inside of the Google. Use the Google to your advantage. Learn about this stuff. Independent study. I know, I'm not teaching you. This is the skill that you need to build to become a great programmer. All great programmers can code independently with just an internet access to Google, and they can learn on their own independently. These are the skill sets that I want to teach you, okay? So this is how you're going to learn by throwing yourself into the deep end and uh, and learning it this way. Okay. So then what happens uh, inside the play lottery? Well, then it does, um, you know, it runs the generated lottery numbers method and it prompts the user and then it'll actually iterate through and shows you the lottery numbers that were generated by your code in the generate lottery numbers method. And then, um, or rather, sorry, is this the generated? Yes. Um, and then it tries to figure out if there's a match between uh, the lottery numbers that you uh, actually put into the prompt, the six numbers. So that happens here when you prompt the user for numbers, it should prompt them for six. Um, and then uh, and store them in a set and return the set. So that set will be returned here as user lottery numbers. And then, so once they've, um, once you've prompted them for the numbers, it should store them in the, in the set. Okay, of numbers, there should be six numbers here. It will go through, show the six random numbers that it generated, and see if there was any that matched. So essentially, I believe from this code down, you don't really need to worry about it. This is all code that I've written out on your behalf, um, and it should just run, and uh, it should just work. Um, let's see, so, uh, oh, we have also the play this method down here. I forgot about this one, play lottery. This method should compare the two sets of integers and return um, a new set of integers that represent all the matching numbers. So you also need to do the logic to figure out uh, how the numbers are matched. Okay, so how do you match the two sets of numbers? One is the set of numbers that were generated by the system, and one are the set of numbers that you will type in yourself. So there's some code that you need to write uh, to figure out how the two match up with each other. Okay, again, learning about sets here is going to be critical, specifically the hash set. So I will leave you now with that information, armed with that information, to go ahead and complete this assignment. Again, it's going to be difficult. Uh, it might take you a long time to finish this, but you the things that you are going to learn when you actually go through and do this assignment are going to be invaluable. So I wish you the very best, the very best of luck. I wish you happy learning, and obviously, bye for now. Take care.